Hello, everyone. Welcome back to our mini lecture. In the previous lesson, we have covered the design of water lamp circuits. Today, we will simulate a common real-life scenario. The design of traffic light control circuits. Now, we will cover the following topics. Traffic lights are a ubiquitous part of everyday travel and traffic management, often found at intersections in multiple sets. Can we design a traffic light control system using a microcontroller? The main task for this lesson is to use three pins of a microcontroller to control the green, yellow, and red lights respectively. The green light should remain on for 45 seconds before turning off, followed by the yellow light which should stay on for 2 seconds, and then the red light should stay on for 45 seconds before turning off. This sequence should repeat continuously. As shown in the diagram, our simulation circuit consists of a basic microcontroller system, with the P1.0 port connected to a green LED to simulate the green light, P1.1 controlling the yellow light, and P1.2 controlling the red light. The entire program structure consists of sequential and loop statements, which are not particularly complex. Next, let's analyze the program, as depicted in the diagram. The first part includes various declarations and variable definitions. Here we introduce a new concept. Hashtag define macros. The format is as follows. In this task, we replace unsigned char with euchre and unsigned int with uint. It is important to note that once a macro is defined in a program, its new name can be used throughout the entire code. The main function is relatively simple, involving a while loop that continuously repeats the light control sequence. It is crucial to ensure that when turning on the next light, the previous light is turned off to avoid logical errors. In this example, the delay subroutine uses a parameterized function with a nested for loop similar to previous examples. Let's learn about writing and calling parameterized functions. Firstly, it is important to understand the distinction between formal parameters and actual parameters. When defining a function, the variable names inside the parentheses after the function name are called formal parameter or parameter. When calling this function, the values or expressions inside the parentheses are called actual parameter or argument. The parentheses following the delay function include euchre time, which is a parameter for the function. If the function does not require input data, the parameter can be omitted. In this example, uTime is defined as an unsigned char variable, serving as the parameter for the function. When calling this function, a specific actual value replaces this parameter. This actual value is known as the argument. Once the parameter is replaced by the argument, all variables within the function that have the same name as the parameter will be replaced by the argument. If the subroutine is defined after the main function, it must be declared before the main function. The declaration of the subroutine is shown on line 4 of the program, and the syntax format can be observed. When declaring a parameterized function, the parameter types must be listed within the parentheses. If there are multiple parameters, all their types must be specified, separated by commas. The variable names can be included or omitted after the parameter types. A semicolon must follow the parentheses. It is crucial that the parameter and the argument match in number, order, and type, otherwise, a type mismatch error will occur. Additionally, 
data is only transmitted from the argument to the parameter in a unidirectional manner. By adjusting the number of iterations in the delay function, the duration of the delay can be modified. For ease of observation, we reduce duration for which the system was active in the program. After compiling and linking the control program, click the simulation button to observe the actual control effects. The main observation was that the program logic was correct indicating a successful debug. Today, we have learned to design traffic light control circuits using microcontrollers. Controlling the red, yellow, and green lights through three P1 ports. Through case analysis, we have also learned about the use of hashtag define macros and further explored parameterized functions. After class, you may try adding control for traffic lights in the opposite direction in the simulation and program to gain proficiency with these concepts. Finally, please complete the following exercises and practice further to deepen your understanding and enhance your skills. That concludes this lesson. See you next time.